So we have a pretty cool paper in JOSPT 2015. The authors, Peter Maliolis, Jill Cook, Craig Purden, Ebony Rio, basically the all-stars of tendon research, right, in the physical therapy world. And they kind of created this guide on which exercise to choose for folks in order to help folks get back to sport, right? And what was really, what really stood out to me is they kind of talked about tendons and how much stress a tendon will tolerate, right? And if you think about a tendon, what a tendon does, what's its job? It's really kind of an energy storage device, it kind of stores and releases energy. Think about jumping. The tendon is going to store energy and then release it, right? The hardest thing for a tendon to do is store and release energy very quickly under a heavy load, okay? So if you're doing a very challenging jump, let's say with a weight vest on, that is a ton of stress to the tendon, okay? The more you slow down that movement, the easier it is on the tendon because there's not as much energy storage. And if you do an isometric, it's even less stress on the tendon because it doesn't have to do that energy storage the way it would for a fast explosive movement, okay? So if you have a patient in front of you, you can give them whatever intervention they're able to handle, right? at that time, right? So if I have a basketball player that has some pain, but not that much, I'm definitely not going to start with isometrics because they can already handle isotonics and maybe they can also handle some plyometrics. So I'm going to meet that patient where they are in terms of tolerance. If I have a patient that comes in that can barely walk because their knee is hurting so badly, then yeah, I'm going to try some isometrics just because generally speaking, isometrics are well tolerated just because they're much, much easier on the tendon. Okay. We know all these different types of treatments have a good effect. So you probably want to pick the uh, intervention that's going to meet that person where they are in terms of irritability. And you also want to pick exercises that are going to be specific to get them back to whatever activity they want to get back to. Okay. So if you have something that's someone that's very irritable, maybe you start off with some isometrics and some easy isotonics. As they start to improve, you can give them some heavier isotonics. Maybe you start with a tempo, and over the course of time, you reduce that tempo. Maybe you start with some higher reps, and over the course of time, you go down to lower reps. As that person is tolerating heavier loading, we start incorporating more energy storage exercises, which is a fancy way of starting to jump, starting to run. We're incorporating more change of direction drills, whatever it is. And as the tolerance gets better and better and better, we slowly return back to sport over the course of time. Okay. So in my mind, it seems like most of these different types of exercises are all beneficial. So I'm just going to give them the hardest exercise that they can tolerate well. And over the course of time, I'm just going to make that more and more specific to the activity that the person wants to get back to by increasing loads, increasing speeds, and then getting back to whatever activity. Because a rehab program for an Olympic weightlifter who has to be able to produce force relatively quickly out of the hole in the squat, right? under heavy load is much different compared to a basketball player that has to jump and land and run, you know, for a large period of time, right? Very different demands. So the rehab programs would probably reflect that. So here's what I want you to do next, guys. If you enjoyed this video so far, I have an entire course. It's free. It's called the Fitness Pain-Free Mini Course. And we go over three lessons going to help you take a lot of this information that we went over so far and put it into practice. The first lecture is called Why We Need a Better System. So first and foremost, the way we treat fitness individuals, all right, athletic people in the gym from a physical therapy perspective is pretty much broke, okay? So we need a better system to serve the folks that are in the gym that get hurt, they want to get back to training, all right? Lecture number two is called Seven Reasons Why People Get Hurt in the Gym. And essentially, we have to know the reasons why people get hurt in the gym so we can keep them safe in the future, right? And when they get hurt, we have to know why and how to get them back to training in the gym. Okay. So a thorough understanding of this is very, very important. I actually have a really cool infographic that goes along with this lecture that you get for free as well. And lastly, we go over a case study of how to get someone out of pain and back to training. So these principles are all phenomenal, but we don't actually put it together and you don't understand how to create a program to get people back in the gym and keep them safe for the long term, then we lose, right? So I'll put a link in the show notes for this. It's a fitness pain-free mini course. Definitely check this out.